Today, I'm taking this luxury icebreaker for five days from France all the way over to Iceland. I'll show you exactly what it's like to live on board, from my huge two-floor suite with a private hot tub to the fine dining and opulent facilities as we explore this record-breaking vessel. All this doesn't come cheap though, with prices north of $13,000, but you're invited along for the journey. With that, let's pick up my story in northern France. Our voyage today begins at the port, which is a mix of cargo, hydrocarbon, and of course, cruise ships. Introducing our ship, Le Commandant Charcot, named after the French polar scientist. Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel. We're about to get on board this icebreaker. I'm super excited about this. I don't have any point of comparison. I've never been on an icebreaker before. So anyway, let's go and sort out the various formalities and go and get on board. Check-in is dealt with in two phases. Firstly, our passports are checked along with our tickets and health declaration. We'll leave our bags here as they'll be delivered to our suite in due course. As we walk up the gangway, I'm surprised how large this ship seems. On paper, it's far from the largest I've been on, at 492 feet in length. Two of the friendly crew warmly welcome us on board and I'm shown through a brief additional security check. And just like that, we're on the world's only luxury icebreaker. The reception area is beautifully designed, featuring digital artwork, running from the floor to the ceiling of the entire ship. To my delight, I'm offered a refreshing glass of champagne as we complete some of the final formalities. As with most cruises, I'm leaving my credit card on file for any incidentals on board. I'm then issued my room key, encased in this beautiful leather sleeve. We're currently on deck five and our suite is located upper level on deck six. Our friendly butler will escort us to our new living quarters. Suite 642 is to the stern of the ship with a rather unique aft view over two floors. Well, I'm happy to welcome you on board our cruise, our ship and our home for the next, I think it's five days, but most importantly, welcome back to the channel, Millie. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good, thank you. Uh, you're back for another one, right? <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so as I struggle to contain my excitement, let's take a look around this, well, frankly palatial 1100 square foot residence. Let's start in our dining room with seats for six people. I'm not quite sure who the other four people are going to be though. Moving on, let's continue to our living room, which opens out to the full height of the duplex suite. This creates a lovely space flooded with natural light. Oh, and do note there's even a fireplace. Naturally, there's a mini bar with more glasses than I know what to do with, an espresso machine, and of course, yes, the drinks here are bottomless, including the booze. Outside, there's a huge balcony, complete with a private hot tub, which we'll take a proper look at shortly. Let's head upstairs to the master bedroom. Okay, I'm gonna say it, this is not only the most insane cruise ship room I've ever stayed in, but it's actually the most incredible room, period. You'll note our bags have already been delivered, which is most efficient. Compare this to other cruises where I've had to wait several hours. There's a bunch of Pon and goodies waiting for us as well, such as this amenity kit, along with waterproof bags for any expeditions we may take. Now for the bathroom. I think I need to remove any preconceptions of cruise ship bathrooms from my mind. This is insane. Oh, and furnished with my favorite Diptyque products. As if that's not enough, there's a walk-in wardrobe. Oh, and by the way, all your laundry and pressing is included during your voyage. And finally, the toilet, which seems a little forgotten tucked away back here. It's fair to say Millie and I are speechless. Prior to departure, we must watch the safety video, which is a little different due to the Arctic itineraries that this ship embarks upon. For example, check out the Arctic immersion suit provided to all guests on board. This will keep you alive for 24 plus hours in extreme cold conditions. With that, it's finally time to get on our way. Over the next five days, we'll sail some 2,000 miles northwards, up through the Irish Sea, and onwards up the North Atlantic to Reykjavik, Iceland.
Now we're moving, it's time to get the rest of our bags unpacked before we can get ready for dinner and explore the rest of this incredible ship. What is that? Will, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Millie. Let's go and investigate. Definitely gonna catch a big one. Yeah, don't mind me. I'm uh, attempting to fish. Uh, I don't think that's how fishing works. Yeah, I don't seem to be very successful in catching any fish today. However, I tell you where I would be is today's video sponsor, the Fishing Clash. They've been my go-to mobile game for a while, which is why you should download it today for free. The cool part about it is you don't even need to leave your house, or in my case, the luxury of this cruise ship. You can fish all around the world, exploring new locations and catch different kinds of fish. One tip for new players, you can use the weight gain to help you catch bigger fish. It certainly helped me improve. You can download the game right now. Just hit the link in the description or Scan my QR code on screen. Plus, use code TrekTrendy for twenty dollars of free in-game perks. Thanks again, Fishing Clash, for sponsoring today's video. After a quick shower, it's time to get something a little more formal on. I know, for once, there's no ripped jeans or NASA hoodies in sight. Doesn't Millie look just stunning this evening? So let's kick this evening off with a date in the observation lounge. Now, we're still learning our way around the ship, but by each stairwell and elevator, there's a handy plan to consult the directions. We're heading up to the top, deck nine, which should also come with the ship's best views. This will do perfectly, right by the window and with a stunning view out over the bow. Now whilst lots on board is inclusive, some alcohol such as champagne is not. But that's not going to stop us. Oh my goodness, would you look at that. For the sake of the bingo card, we simply must get some caviar for, um, 65 euros? I say we, Melia's not a fan of caviar, so opts for a passion fruit martini. I've decided to up the ante further and complement the caviar order with some 2012 Dom. Also an FYI, it's commonplace in France for champagne to be served in a wine glass. Now for caviar. It's the perfect accompaniment for the champagne and a wonderful start to an evening of fine food. Now to continue this trend, we must head back down to deck five to the restaurant Nuna. This is the ship's main formal venue, offering contemporary French cuisine by three Michelin starred chefs. You see, it's not like a traditional cruise where you're seated with others, or indeed you're not restricted by a dining time. We're asked our preference for seating, and naturally we'd prefer to be by the window, so they'll ensure this or a similar seat is reserved for each night. The menu is extensive, with options too for vegetarians. You can also mix and match between the set menus should you wish. To begin, we'll kick things off with a gin and tonic. These are also not inclusive, by the way. We're initially served a sweet potato salad with citrus, coconut milk and hummus. I do believe I've spotted Jack Sparrow. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Now for the lobster tail, green asparagus and almonds. Next up, neither of us fancied the foie gras, though for reference, this is what it looked like thanks to another passenger. Instead, we both choose the eggplant tart, with truffled fresh tomato dressing and black garlic. Surprisingly, we're both going strong still. It's time for main course. The veal tenderloin, which comes with truffled vegetables and potato gratin. One word, phenomenal. Well, we've made it through the five courses, and now it's dessert time. Would you look at this, a miniature of our ship made out of chocolate cake. Aside from being delicious, the attention to detail with this menu has been outstanding. With the sun finally beginning to set, it's time for this evening's entertainment at the theatre towards the front of the ship, on the same deck 5. Given the ship is small, I wasn't expecting this level of entertainment provision, especially when comparing to the larger Ritz-Carlton yacht, which has very limited entertainment space. We've 
just come back from gala night. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been delicious food, followed by jazz music and dancing. Oh, I, I've really enjoyed it. And to be fair, some real sophistication for once on the channel. So uh, I think we've done pretty well. <laughs> Full to the brim with food and happiness, I make it bedtime. It's been quite the eventful first day, and tomorrow we have lots more exploring to do around the ship. The next day. Well, a very good morning to you from the Irish Sea. We've made solid progress throughout the night, and I make it time for breakfast located back on Deck 5's Nuna restaurant. The menu is again extensive, with anything from avocado on toast to French crepes and truffled eggs benedict. After placing our order, I'll start with the obligatory caffeine hit before heading over to investigate the other option provided for breakfast, the buffet. It's again mighty impressive and comparable to an upmarket luxury hotel with the addition of champagne. Let's return to our table then and see how our orders have turned out. Millie has gone for the French toast with a rich caramel sauce and I've chosen the avocado on toast, a personal favorite. With breakfast out of the way, it's time we take a proper look around the ship. We'll start with the outer decks. The promenade on deck 5 wraps around the entirety of the ship. I love this and provides some much needed space to walk off all that food. When it's colder, such as in the Arctic, where the ship is heading, there are these incredible thermal benches. Basically, it's like sitting on a radiator. Up to deck 6 and you'll get access to the helipad. Albeit quite windy, it provides an awesome perspective of our ship, especially right at the front here. In fact, we can see the Isle of Man in the distance. Lastly, we must check out the stern, and whilst we can get a similar view from our balcony, this doesn't come with access to the secondary bridge. So for background, this secondary control centre provides two purposes. One as a backup in case the main bridge is compromised. However, this is actually used frequently when in the polar regions. It allows full flexibility in operation and the ability to break ice from both directions. In contrast, this is the main bridge on deck 8. It's actually nearly always open to pop in and take a look. Unlike a recent Royal Caribbean cruise where I was charged $200 for the privilege. That's a story for another day though. Did you know there's a world-class spa facility on board? So let's hot-foot it up to deck 9 and indulge. Now, access to the spa is complimentary, which is unusual as most cruise lines make this a paid facility. What's not complimentary are the treatments. However, for an onboard spa, I think these are priced pretty fairly. We'll be maximizing the facilities though. First up, the sauna. This is on the larger side and offers fabulous views out over the ocean. I think it's fair to say this is one of my favorite saunas I've ever been in. Next up, the snow room. This is a facility I've never tried before, but seeing as this is a polar expedition ship, it seems fitting. Let's brave the freezing temperatures. Let me just say, Millie is dealing with this a lot better than I. To warm up, let's hit the indoor pool. I always find it bemusing swimming on a ship. It seems like the definition of irony, but hey, it's warm and we have the pool to ourselves, so why not? There's also another outdoor pool called the Blue Lagoon, and thankfully this is heated, so we'll check that out a little later on. Back poolside, I think it's time we make the most of this extensive tea and coffee menu with a cappuccino. Albeit it's iced, but I'm so predictable. I make it lunchtime, and this is served in the Sealer restaurant on the same deck, Deck 9. Like Nuna on Deck 5, it's a beautiful modern space. However, this is more of a buffet than a la carte setup. This is by no means a drop in quality though.
Personally, I love the outdoor grill, offering a selection of made-to-order items. With my order placed, I'm momentarily distracted, tempted by a freshly shucked oyster. Again, this is no ordinary cruise ship buffet. So what have I gone for? Well, my arm got twisted by the beef burger with sweet potato fries, perhaps one of the juiciest and most delicious burgers I've ever had. Whilst Millie goes for the surf and turf selection, the ribeye fried prawns with thick cut chips. For review purposes, I simply must sample dessert. Now this is something we all know the French do superbly. This chocolate mousse has totally ruined store-bought mousses for life. Rich, creamy with large chunks of chocolate. Wow. Well, I'd love to say that this trip was all plain sailing, but of course we are dealing with Mother Nature and her unpredictability when at sea. So uh, yeah, needless to say, unfortunately, it's not quite what it was earlier on today. But need not worry, we've still got plenty to do on board. So let me show you some of the things that you can do when you've got a bit of a, a rainy, yucky sea day. Now, one of the facilities you may not have seen on a cruise ship before is a laboratory, and our ship has multiple. Given that sailings go to some of the most remote parts of the planet, namely Antarctica and the North Pole, Ponant have scientists on board for such trips. The labs are located on Deck 3, alongside the expedition rooms. This is where you'll board a tender like one of the 16 Zodiacs for a closer look ashore in the polar regions. Oh, and this odd contraption is a boot warmer. I could do with one of these for the colder days back home. Anyway, the labs. There's a wet one for, well, as it says in the name, experiments conducted with instruments from the water and ice. And then there's a dry one, where we got to see a tardigrade. This micro animal can survive super harsh environments from the extreme cold to extreme hot and even the vacuum of space. With the weather showing no signs of improvement, I think it's finally time we check out our in-room hot tub. This is perhaps our favourite part of our duplex suite, and whilst we don't quite have the sun on our side, it's certainly something which you can enjoy whatever the weather. You may be wondering, if you don't have a duplex suite, is there a communal outdoor hot tub? Well, I can do one better for you, the aforementioned Blue Lagoon on Deck 9, which is kind of a wraparound pool kept at a constant hot tub-like temperature. However, in rough seas like this afternoon, it's probably not the most popular of pursuits. With that, I think it's time to head back to our room and get ready for this evening's plans. Rather than a shower this evening, I've opted for a relaxing bath and movie. What a combination. One hour later. So it's back down to deck 5 and to our usual table by the window. What's on the menu tonight then? As with last night, it's pretty extensive. Do let me know what you'd choose down below. After placing our order, we're served some fresh bread along with a couple of refreshing G&Ts. To start, we're offered an amuse-bouche of red quinoa, watermelon, feta and green asparagus. Next up, the soup course, and I've chosen the broccoli soup, which is divine. Now for a personal favourite, the beef carpaccio with black truffle and parmesan. For main, I opt for something a little lighter, and maybe not to everyone's taste, the tandoori cauliflower slice. It's surprisingly really filling and super tasty. For dessert, I'm served the forest noir, or, well, black forest chocolatey, fruity, and wrapping up another delicious meal. Now for tonight's entertainment, albeit a little low-key compared to last night's production. We're invited to the main lounge for an evening of dancing. Something else has really caught my eye in here, and that's some of the drinks on offer. Aside from the wide selection of champagne and wines, there's some Louis XIII Cognac, which retails at $3,000 a bottle. This is nothing compared to the 1904 Armagnac served, which retails at $13,000 a bottle. Not quite ready for bed, we have a brainwave. The 50-inch TV in our living room would be the perfect Mario Kart setup.
begrudged to report I lost. Before turning in for the night, let's get some room service breakfast ordered. The next day. Well, good morning from Iceland. Despite setting my alarm for 6am, we've arrived early into port. It's certainly exciting to wake up here, though I wish I'd been able to see our arrival. With a knock at the door, our room service is delivered. Let's see what we've gone for. Aside from the obligatory caffeine hit of a cappuccino, Millie's ordered her favourite French toast, complete with caramel sauce. I instead opt for the buttermilk pancakes. Not usually the one for a sweet breakfast, but this was absolutely spot on. Sadly, this marks the end of our icebreaker cruise. And yes, I know we didn't exactly break any ice, but that's a reason to come back and try one of their North Pole or Antarctica voyages. Those are at an entirely different price point though, which brings me nicely onto our costs. For five days full board in the duplex suite cost us $13,570. Now, whilst that's super expensive, when you compare this to other cruises and given the space, attention to detail and experience, I think this demonstrates a good price overall. But do let me know what you think down down below. Well, just like that, welcome to Iceland. We have arrived here in Reykjavik after the last five days at sea. Millie, how has your experience been? Oh, it's been wonderful. It's been the best cruise yet. It really has, hasn't it? We've mm -hmm. absolutely loved every second of it. So anyway, thank you again so much for watching and we'll catch you all again next time. Bye.